All right, Doombots, here we go with another roster review, this time from a friend, White Fang. Now, White Fang also has a 2 million TCP roster, but it's just different enough from the previous 2 million I did that I'd like to kind of go over it, uh, share some insights. Maybe your roster looks closer to his than the previous one that you uh, may have watched and get an idea of what he's done right and what he should be doing going forward now. Quick scan shows a ridiculously strong Nick Fury, to say the least, which is completely fine. Usually you see a Nick Fury like this and you imagine there's a decent chunk of red stars on him, as well as maybe gear tier 13 during the process of Ultron. Nick Fury was and still is a relatively good character to include in your Dark Dimension 2 team. So it stands to reason that you would benefit from having him. Uh, other than that, you have pretty decent Star Lord, Juggernaut, Groot, Minerva, Rocket. Uh, the only weird thing I could say off the top is the presence of Wolverine and Mordo in the same kind of conversation as the other characters. A lot of times that probably stands to reason for uh, a high red star pull or anticipation of something. Wolverine tends to be invested in very early for a lot of players because you get him free and if you weren't on a specific path maybe while you're waiting to unlock daredevil for the defenders or if you happen to get her very early uh, ms marvel you probably worked a little bit on wolverine so that said please stop working on wolverine he's done now uh, mordo being high trust me i had a very uh, high impact mordo for a long time so much so that i had to work extra hard on my supernatural team to balance them around him thanks to a five red star pull but other than that there's nothing crazy uh, out of the ordinary or uh, offensive in the roster to say the least there are a handful of characters I'd like to see a little bit more effort placed into, but you have a whole million TCP, and if you've watched my TCP Milestone series, you are well on your way to it. The only thing I will point out is the characters you have not unlocked yet, Black Bolt, hopefully this pass, but who's to say? Uh, and if not, it's not that big of a deal. He's not that high an impact a character four players at the 2 million TCP. It's not until you get to 3 or 4 million where you're uh, probably making the jumps of U7 uh, or War that are going to require some high-impact legendaries like Black Bolt. However, Phoenix, Ultron, those are characters you probably want to unlock sooner than later, and if it stands to reason that you've almost definitely uh, started working towards Ultron, I will say, though, Invisible Woman being so low on the roster might be indicative of how recently you've unlocked her, and it might benefit you in one way or another to start working on her. Outside of that, let's go straight into Blitz. Now, this is very zoomed in. I was able to use a very good chunk of your roster, and as a result of it, we don't have to spend too many charges in the early parts of the rotation. Quick recap, S teams win an 8-3, A teams win an 8 8-1 and 8-2, reliably, of course. Uh, B teams are unreliable after Tier 7 because they can't really punch up, and Trash teams are totally unreliable. Use them in the early stages, the first two tiers of Blitz, maybe even the third, depending on how strong they are, but ultimately use them once and then use them to reset Blitz fights. Now, zoom out a little bit so we can see a little more. What we have here is a pretty standard set of teams. We have a Brotherhood team that should be more than capable of winning an A3, a modified Minervardian Guardian Nerva team uh, using Drax instead of Thanos, specifically because Drax is adequate and Thanos is about to get a whole lot more useful, so I'd rather use this team now than try to mix and match it later. Uh, Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, I'm including Coulson on this team for now, because I think that with a really strong Nick Fury, you're going to need a little bit of extra boost from Coulson, as opposed to Medic or Operative or Trooper. Oh, well, Medic's there. Operative or Trooper specifically, I don't think they're going to do too much for the team. And Security being the second strongest is pretty okay. Give it a shot. Uh, if not, I would recommend working on Medic and Security to kind of sure up this team, not only for Blitz, but definitely for War. The next stage is the Asgardians. No notes. They're phenomenal. Doesn't matter how strong they are. They will win an A3. And this is kind of a little mishmash team, but I was able to, to test a very similar build. 
basically Captain Marvel and Ms. Marvel work so well together that it doesn't matter who else is on the team. That said, while I would like to add more brawlers, you don't have enough brawlers in the 17 to 23k range to make it great. So instead I put Falcon and Shuri on the team. Shuri giving you a little bit of survivability and Falcon giving you a speed up, assuming they eventually fix the Falcon bug. That said, moving on to the A-teams, uh, defenders, as is tradition, I will always place the defenders as an A-team. If your defenders are capable of winning an 8-3 consistently, great, move them up to an 8-S team and call it a day. That's why these are only just my recommendations. Uh, this is a very strange team comp. Uh, I'm technically using Thanos on this team to feed Gamora and Doctor Strange as the only damage dealers, uh, but this team is kind of a holdover of multiple teams. Uh, Gamora obviously wants to be on the Brawlers team, but she's a little too strong. Doctor Strange and Mordo want to be on the Supernatural team, but you don't quite have them at about 30, the entire team at around 30k to balance out Mordo. And Thanos, you can easily put him on this team, but I think you can probably get a couple of 8-0, wins with this one, so I wouldn't go absolutely out of my way to worry about those other guys right now. You have a long way to go, and you're currently working on unlocking phoenix if i recall correctly so don't deviate from that strategy to make one better blitz team this should be fine uh, the rest of the teams are pretty standard it is the symbiote spider verse team no real notes there the kree with ronin the sinister six and kind of a weird hybrid team now you don't quite have the power armor team built up to take full advantage of all of the characters they're in a bunch of different locations worth of power so what i did was i took uh, some tech characters with a vision and then i threw graviton next to a name monstrosity the assumption here being this team will be able to steal away a victory behind a taunt uh, graviton will give the aim characters a little bit of a boost and vision is just overall a great character with Merc Lieutenant. Anyway, you should be adequate uh, in, in winning a fight in 8081 with this team. But again, when you when you have such huge separation of power in your rosters, it's important to remember that just because five characters uh, are claim to be a great team, they need to still be within certain power level and investment of each other to reach that potential. And a lot of times someone will maybe put a very, very strong Mordo on a supernatural team of all 10k characters and wonder, well, why is this team not winning? Well, because it can't win because this number right here, this variation is the difference of how strong your strongest character is versus your weakest. And when you fight in a top tier blitz battle, they don't really respect the difference. They just are going to like that variation is what's going to kill you moving into uh, the harder fights. So just keep that in mind. Make sure your teams are balanced. They're not a sure to win team if they're not balanced. So, or at least reasonably balanced and no variation under 20% is reasonably balanced unless they are a phenomenal basic team to begin with, like the Brotherhood or uh, as Guardians. Now, moving on to the Mishmash teams again, you're going to see a whole bunch of characters that clearly belong on other teams. But because either the teams are too spread out or maybe the investment's a little too weak, like Ghost Rider and Elsa are a little too far apart, especially compared to Doctor Strange and Mordo, that I can't really put them in with any confidence. That said, we can still use these teams to succeed in Blitz, and that is to help you climb the ladder, reset fights, and maybe even take a pot shot at a fight in 8-0 with one or two of these teams. The only note I will make is these numbers right here represent the average amount of points you will receive in tier 8 at 8 0, 8 1, 8 2, and 8 3. So any team that's worth less than, you know, 15,000 points at any of these fights is probably not a team you're going to want to take a risk with anyway. Uh, you would probably go in with this team at 8 3, click auto fight, intentionally lose. This way you can. Uh, start your ladder back up at 8-0 with your A teams. And of course, the trash teams are just characters with low investment or just overall bad characters. Um, oops, don't know how those guys got there. And fixed. Anyway, so having four trash teams, uh, 
is pretty par for the course, especially when you just notice that trash doesn't mean bad characters. It could mean bad characters, but usually just means low investment. Uh, there shouldn't be any major issues there. Now, I built out a quick little rotation guide for you. It's going to be very simple, as with most rosters who have a lot of characters on the lock that are usable, you're going to use every single team you have once. That will put you just before tier 7, which is okay. You don't actually need to use any charges to accelerate you into tier 8. You have enough teams to not worry about getting there that quickly and making sure that you use your charges at the end is totally great to pad your day one score. That said, if time is of the essence for you and you need to get uh, more balanced time, maybe you have more time available at the beginning of Blitz than you do in the two, three, or four hours before your daily reset where it becomes the next day, uh, then feel free to use a couple of Blitz charges on your A teams, progressing you into tier eight so that your next fight, you get to use all of your A and S teams once as opposed to climbing all the way up in seven it'll pad your score and kind of take away a little bit of the edge off the end of the fight uh, if you read real quick once you get through all of your teams in the second part of your rotation i want you to take your top five teams which are basically all of your s teams and you're going to use them three times each it's going to total 375 total points if you've been following the system i've been telling you about so far that means you will have started the day with 500 cores in the bank 100 daily charges from the villains campaign that you have not claimed and 270 medic supply run charges that you have not done yet in the challenges. That means you'll have a total of 870 charges. Clearly you can't have that many. You can only have 500. That's why we don't claim them. So you can spend the charges early and before the end of the day, claim those charges going back up to 495 charges. Great news is when you end your day with the same number of charges you started with and still spent charges, you can now split your charges across the number of days you blitz. That's kind of the point of my system. It's how, it's not how to hit the highest possible score, it's how efficient you can be towards a goal. So after your day one blitz rotation, which is right here, I have my daily rotation guide for you, which is use your SNA teams, which is a total of 11 teams, um, that's your rotation. You do 11 fights at an average fight time of about two, two and a half minutes. A blitz rotation for you should last somewhere between 20 and 25 minutes. On a bad day, maybe 30. Um, so you're looking at blitz between an hour and an hour and a half a day. But one of those rotations, I want you to take your top three teams and use them three times each for a total of 225 charges. This way you've spread out the number of charges you have over the course of a blitz. You are maximizing the value you can get, and you're ending the day with a little bit of charges in the bank, so you can either choose to go really hard at the end or uh, save them over for the next blitz. That said, taking a quick look at what your projected numbers are going to be, uh, if you're perfect and you win every single fight that you uh, should win, where you should win them, uh, S teams in 8-3, A teams on average in 8-1, uh, you should be getting about 406,000 points per rotation. If you only win with your S teams, probably about 300, and somewhere in the middle is a nice 375. Uh, if you follow this right here, the points per charge rotation, any day that you choose to use two teams three times, you'll get about 300. Three times, three times, you'll get about 440,000, which is basically a free rotation for you. That's one of the really important reasons of following my system this way. You get to use the minimum amount of charges to get a cheap and free rotation. It's incredibly efficient to do it this way. And you'll notice on your opening day, you're probably going to be able to, with that 375 charges we discussed, get an extra 600,000 points. Now, you can obviously do this every day, but it's not as efficient. Obviously, you only get... 200,000 for more fights, more work, and more chances to fail. Now, that means you should probably get, combining these two numbers with the fact that you get a decent amount of points on the opening climb, you should probably get between 1.2 and 1.5 million points for the Blitz rotation. Uh, that said, you have a 2 million TCP roster, which means you should easily hit 6 million following my my system. My system is three times your roster blitzing three times a day, and if you follow... Uh, blitzing three times over three days is a total of nine rotations. You should easily, following my system, hit 6.2 million points. Um, if you don't use any charges and you just kind of be like lazy, like blitzing a couple times a day, figuring it out, 
you'll get somewhere between four and a half and five million points. Now that could be adequate for top 10% or maybe top 6%, uh, depends on where you wanna be. Either way, you should be able to hit all your milestones in an opening rotation with very little effort, make a day of it, and then not really worry about blitz over the course if that's what you wanna do. You can also kind of update if you plan on blitzing four times a day, it's 12. That's how you get 7 million, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the most important thing to remember is in order to succeed at Blitz, you have more teams, not stronger teams. Stronger teams increase your score by a little. More teams increase your score by a ton. And that's one of the reasons why you never want to use more than 50 charges on a team. So 25, 25, 25, totally fine. Once a team costs 50, then it's more efficient to use the next team because those same 50 charges used on a different team twice will always be more points. And you can just kind of check right here. This is a perfect example. If you use this team for 50 charges, uh, it's not as good at 60,000 average points as using this team at 50 charges, which is 44 times two or 88,000 points. It is, however, a little better than using this team. So with discretion, no problem, but still you don't want to necessarily waste charges and this team will get stronger as time progresses anyway. Um, as you bring up teams for one reason or another, your points will go up in general, but the more teams you have, the better you'll do. Same kind of rule here. If you have a target, say you want to hit 10 million, 12 million, feel free to enter it right here and whatever your current score is. So right now, just to kind of check this out, if you want to hit 6 million at your current expected score after day one it's going to take you about eight and a half rotations which kind of lines up with what this is now you want to move to something a little bit higher like 10 million that's going to take 18 rotations this is a great way of kind of looking at a blitz and determining if you have the time to to do it 18 rotations is quite a bit it's about six a day and if you can't afford to do six rotations a day by all means do so that will get you 10 but the big the biggest and best way you specifically can get to higher blitz numbers is patience, waiting until you have a higher roster, usually somewhere between three and four million, to start putting up the 12 to 15 millions that blitzes tend to require, unless you're the Red Skull Blitz. Um, other than that, I don't have much else to tell you. Um, you have been very generous to allow me to show people your roster, and if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out and ask. We've already talked a little bit about it offline, but... If anyone else has any questions about why I do the blitzing I do, feel free to stop by my stream. A lot of times the questions you guys ask in the comments section here in YouTube are not questions that can just be answered off the cuff. They require more of a detailed answer. So feel free to ask any. I might be able to address them in the next video. But anytime you have a question, I stream Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern to basically whenever. And every Thursday when Blitz goes live, so do I. So feel free to stop by, ask any questions there. Anyway, thanks guys so much for watching. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scongeli, and I'll catch you later.